We've had a number of inquiries about putting a door in a steam cabinet. We've actually had a couple of people who have built steam cabinets big enough for a door uh, and the, the results were not as expected. The problem, a door is big, has a lot of mass, the cabin itself had to be large in order to accommodate that, and the amount of steam generated by one and perhaps even two steamers is not sufficient amount of BTUs and steam to really do the job on a door. So what I want to show you is something that I do on windows where I only want to do one side. For instance, I get a number of windows in that are uh, shellacked or stained or whatever natural finish or they just want me to do the exterior and I use this which is essentially a steam cabinet with no bottom in it. You see the steam pipe coming in here, here's the connection there. Uh, runs down through the length, it's only about five, six inches deep. So what I do is simply lay that on top of the windows. And yes, there's steam escapes from, but that's okay, it still gets the job done. So what I haven't done is tried it on doors. So I'm going to experiment by doing the same technique on this door here. It's a, it's a residential door, nothing unique, fairly simple. Um, it's got many layers of paint on it. I'm sure some of them are lead-based and uh, we're going to see how that goes. So that's our experiment. Okay, well it's been just about an hour since I put the box on top of the door. It's turned on the steamer, so it's been steaming for about 40 minutes. So let's see where we go with our experiment. Well, as you can see, I don't know if hopefully you can see it from there, there's um, a good bit of wrinkling and puckering and so forth on the uh, paint. Let's see how we do it here. There's also water laying on here because of the condensation. We can dump that off, but for the time being, it's not real important. And it start evaporating here pretty quickly. Hope you can see that I'm, I'm removing multiple layers of old paint. And I'm just using a broad putty knife here to get under this. Scrape. I got under some veneer. It looks like there's some veneer on this door for her. So it's something to be careful of. I didn't test this door before I started. So I'm going cold here. Meaning not testing the door. Not that the door is cold. your own cameraman as well. We'll just move it over here a little bit. Let it keep running. I just want you to see that wherever there was steam, it did its job. question really of can you strip paint from a door with steam? The answer is obviously yes. And uh, with a good bit of ease. I mean, I've been working at this more than five minutes or so and I have a good bit of it removed. And uh, even on the profiles, uh, which this is just a, a slanted profile here, I take a scraper, paint popping right over that nice you might be wondering, is that for real or not? You can see right here, this is the edge of the steam cabinet where it was sitting. You can see here where the paint
see where it stopped working? Right there is that line. Which is defined as it did. You tip the hair on the corner a little bit, just a hair, but you know, you, it's clear. That's, that's the end of the steam. But you can see what it's done and exactly where it stopped working. Just to show you how little it took to get down there, I just spent about 20 seconds just scraping this back down. That's smooth. Just using a carbide scraper, it happens to be a Baco, but it doesn't matter. I was able to remove that that was left on there, and you're right back down to smooth wood. Very little sanding, if at all, to, to get that uh, where you want it so you can finish coat it again. So, there you go. Now, if you're like me and you'd like to do your dry scraping with a little less mess and a little less hazard, um, then I I use, we use here in the shop all the time, the Pro Scraper. Uh, those are available on my website and you've seen them in use, and if not, they're great. We use them all the time for almost all our flat scraping. So, one other word. Uh, this is not my normal lead safe practices. I normally wear a respirator and gloves, but particularly for the purpose of you being able to understand what I'm saying, I'm not wearing a respirator. So, just do a quick minute here with, with the Pro Scraper. <laughs> Beauty of that.